Hi boys and girls, Marks here, Everything Tenere, and welcome to episode 9 in my Rally Tower build series. So this is the final one, the reveal, uh, where I will show you guys all the small features, uh, pros and cons, how it looks, you know, why and how. <laughs> it's super cold outside, you maybe can see, see it, <laughs> uh, and I'm freezing my butt off. And... Uh, I just want to thank everyone that have stayed tuned for this, all these different episode, episodes in the series uh, that have stayed with me, encouraged me, uh, asking questions and, and, you know, are as interested as me in a process like this. Because building your own kind of thing, it doesn't need to be a rally tower, it could be whatever. Uh, you know, it's a big freaking brain fart. Uh, it's something you go and think about and I'm you know with my light uh, or positive kind of ADHD um, makes this really you know exciting for me and I would say obsessive that might not be good but when you're making something it's really good so everything or the only thing I'm thinking about is how to solve different problems how to iterate and make a better version, how to change things around, how to improve things and so on. So that's why, you know, a design process like this in a build, you have a lot of different iterations and small steps and modifications and changes and redoing it all, all that. And it comes with the process of making something and that's totally normal and that's, supposed, that's how it's supposed to be. So first of all, Let's uh, start it off. Why did I build this? Well, you know, I had last year, I built the rally tower or rally arm for my carpeter. It was super great, a little bit heavy, but super sturdy, wouldn't break in the, you know, you could bash it around, you could flip your bike on it or lift the bike on it pretty much. But there were some limitations and the limitation, first of all, the tower sat in a different position. So when sitting down riding, looking on your road book or your GPS, your map, whatever it is, uh, you had, you know, great view sitting down. But when standing up, more active riding on gravel roads or in terrain, you had to look down a lot. And when you look down a lot, you don't have your perfect view of angle. Uh, you know, you don't look forward and see the road at the same time as you check your GPS road book or map. And that's a big negative thing, right? You want to always have, you know, in your preferred vision or whatever it's called, you know, a, a glimpse of, of the road in front of you. So by doing the tower, everything is moved forward a bit. I have more space and more possibilities to attach whatever I want to attach to the tower. Could be a regular GPS, a phone, a road book, a manual road book, uh, FQR or whatever they are called. Uh, Plus, I could move my speedo from the handlebars down to the tower. This is not maybe a, you know, a positive uh, or negative thing. Uh, you know, I liked having my speedo on the handlebar. It was convenient. But why not have it in front? <laughs> because if I'm going to check the speed or anything on the speed, I had to look even further downwards. Right. Enough said with that. So a few positive things, right? Lighter, this one with the carpeter and everything installed is about 4.4 kilos. So that's everything. Oh, I, like you see it here with all the attachment points, all the uh, mounts for the side fairings, all the lights, carpeter, mount holder, speedo, everything. So 4.4, I think, around 4.4 kilos. The original front end of the bike with the side support plastic fairings or the inner plastics uh, with speedo and the light and the windscreen that was 4.4 kilos so i have about the same weight now but i also added the carpeter which weighs with its with its mounting uh, holder about one kilo i also added another headlight another you know high beam so that weighs about 430 or 480, something like that, uh, grams. So 
I added more weight to this, but I'm keeping the tower the same weight and less. So my previous setup was about 6.5 kilos with the arm and the carpenter and the holder. So even if I haven't saved much from the OEM standard weight, I saved a lot of weight with the added things I put on the tower. And by all, no, by all means, this is not the last tower I build. I will make another version. I'm going to talk about that as well. But let's have a closer look at it. So the front end. The windscreen you see, that's, that's from a prototype team in Italy. It's their rally version windscreen for the OEM T7, which you can put over your OEM headlight assembly and remove your standard windscreen and have this. It's approximately two centimeters taller than the OEM windscreen. Now on my bike with the rally tower, it's not taller, but we're going to come to that as well. I have a Pure Lux 40 watt floodlight mounted down here. So that's a high beam, extra high beam. I bought this from valostore.se here in Sweden. It's about 2800 lumens. And as I said, it's a floodlight. So it's a wide uh, light, you know, spread and not a spot one. I do have a spot one as well. I will in the future try out the spot as well and have that mount and see the difference if you know if I should go with the flow floodlight or with the spot one. It all depends on what you're riding, right? So it's a lot of open roads and, and gravel roads. Uh, a spotlight might be better. If you're in close quarters, you know, trails, a lot of in the woods and whatnot, a floodlight, I guess, would be better because you have you know, a tighter, you know, space, you have, don't have open areas, so this will light up more. These four lights here, they are the OEM lights that is mounted in the OEM headlight assembly. These are just removed from the headlight assembly, watertight and mounted on my own bracket here. This I will not do again, because it's a pain in the ass to get a OEM headlight assembly apart. They are not watertight, and they are maybe not as effective as you would wish for, but they are as close as OEM as I have uh, regarding, uh, you know, uh, C rated, all that stuff. You know, if I get stopped by the cops, you know, could they flunk it? Yeah, sure they could. Anyways, they are mounted on a bracket that is hanging down from the top here. We have a little hole in the middle there I don't know if you can see it, but I can use a hex key, put that in, and I can change the angle of this bracket. So tilting it downwards or upwards to adjust my low, light, uh, low beam and high beam, uh, you know, the, the light, how it shines and so on. So that's a great function, but I have these Chinese kind of smaller lights as well. So for my next version, I will use those and it's a much, 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 much simpler design and it will be easier as well to adjust really easily. So that's the front. We have the prototype team rally windscreen. We have the Purelux 40 watt floodlight from valostore.se. The OEM headlight, so the low beam is on top as it is on the standard OEM headlight assembly and the high beam is in the bottom. Let's go and check the other side. So here's the view from uh, Oh, left side, a bit rearwards. <laughs> you will get an uh, angle as well from seated and standing position uh, when I open the garage door and can move the bike out into the snow. But as you can see, the Speedo is very easily to view or very easy viewing angle. Even standing up, you can see the gear indicator. Uh, I have my, my ABS off switch mounted here. On the left side, I was supposed to put my charger outlet here with the USB, two different USB chargers, but I will mount the USB charger device here instead. So it's closer to my phone and tank bag or whatever I want to charge, right? I also have space on the right side here to put switches so I could turn off the extra high beam uh, headlight. I opted to not install that in this one. So in the next version, this might be cut off. So it's just a plate to hold the Speedo. 
maybe some small little portion here on both sides so you can attach at least one switch or two switch uh, side to side and a charger if uh, wanted. So if anyone maybe wants to buy a tower later on uh, that what will be included or that will be in the in the holder for the headlight assembly uh, for the speedo. I have my carpeter here. Uh, this is of course uh, movable. I could remove it and adjust the position of it. You know, angle is now fixed at this about 45 degree angle, I would say. But I could move it up and down. Now it's pretty damn low and I might move it upwards, but we have a limitation and that's the windscreen at the moment. And I will go through that as well. That's also why I will make a version two of this. So the charger for the Carpe Iter is in between the side plates here uh, or the, the frame of the rally tower. And then I have, you know, a cable that goes here on the left side behind this fairing to a connector that will charge it. On the right side, I have the power to the headlight assembly uh, and the extra high beam. So I use the standard um, connector because I, you know, removed uh, the lights from a, a broken headlight assembly. In the future, there will be uh, other connectors uh, to, you know, connect the different lights and also be a different kind of setup. So that's pretty much everything from here. The terrain command I have on my left hand side of my on my on my bars. Uh, the controller for that sits under the tank on the left side. As I remove the inner side fairings, the support fairings, the black ones, I have plenty of space there. So I made a mounting point, a little bracket uh, that will hold the terrain command controller. So I minimize all the cabling that goes out to the tower and don't have anything that goes over, hanging, dangling or whatnot. Everything is cinched down with zip ties and Nothing should or will come loose. Uh, it's a rock solid solution. So we can uh, have a look at that another time. It's not that interesting, but prior I had the controller for this one under the tank, about straight under the tank and not in front here. So it's easy to access it, remove the cables if wanted. And same with the connectors for, for the front here. So before I drive this sucker out, I just wanted to show you my viewing angle. Maybe it's hard to see here, but uh, this is from me seating or seated position, pretty front of the bike, all snugged up to the tank or, you know, a bit further back. And now it's, seat, uh, it's standing up and you can see when I look forward, okay, this is not showing the right angle right but I don't need to look down too far I can see the gear uh, indicator as well and as you can see the plastic windshield is just covering the carpet so before I take the bike out and show you guys the light or the lighting setup and how much it shines or do not shine <laughs> I'm gonna talk about why I will make a version 2 so when building things, as I said before, you always come up with good and better ideas uh, to implement, but it might be too late. You might already been cutting out stuff and mounting everything and doing stuff. So you cannot remove and redo it because then it will be just a Frankenstein tower with pieces bolted on everywhere. And when you do a thing like this, uh, I did not mention that, but the tower is built uh, with PE300 which is a plastic and it's a 10 millimeter thick plastic and I have a spacer in between both that are 22 that is 22 millimeters thick and 10 millimeters tall uh, you can say it like that and those are a bit of a limiting factor so another thing that I noticed when I was done was that oh crap as you can see here the windscreen starts here the distance from the from the front fairing here, from the mudguard up here, needs to be at least 21 centimeters. And I'm just about that, you know, limit. It will not hit, but it's close. And you don't want to be close. 
you want to have some extra, <laughs> believe me. And visually, design-wise, you want everything to blend in and look good. And this is a point here on the side fairings, which you want, want to have this part or here, about here, you want it to be in this level. And as you can see, that's about six or seven centimeters taller. So what I will do in version two, that I, instead of using this plastic coming out horizontally, it will go in an angle up. The extra high beam will sit as it sits now, but taller up. I will use different lights, so I don't need to have a big cutout in the tower for my little adjustable bracket. And the windscreen will also get seven centimeters, about seven centimeters taller. So I will have more real estate behind the windscreen and protected by the windscreen when moving everything upwards. So a slight change. Uh, also the spacer in between the two plates in the tower uh, will be a bit beefier. So I, will, I actually bought already, I haven't received them, a 25 millimeter P300 plastic big sheet. And then I will uh, have my friend mill it down to 22 millimeters. So I'll have exact 22 millimeters. Then I can cut out pieces for spacers out of that and make them maybe 22 times 15 or 20. So I have more support and more sturdy support to put bolts through and so on uh, when mounting the tower together. So it will be even more sturdy. It's already, you know, I can grab it by the windscreen here and I can move the whole bike. It's not going anywhere. The good thing with the 300P plastic is that it's very resistant to shocks, uh, bends and so on. So it will return like memory uh, to its original position. Uh, you know, aluminium might bend and crack or bend and stay at the place where you bent it to, which is not as good. So P300 is good. You also have POM. Uh, which is another plastic material which is denser, so it's harder. That is doable to build stuff in as well, even better to thread things in and so on, but it's more expensive. So that's why I didn't go with the POM material. So PE300 is... So that you... Now you know why I want to do a version 2. Raise this up a bit, the windscreen will come taller. Even if I like a low windscreen, I think it looks better and I don't want to have too much on top or sticking up above uh, my carpeter or road book or whatever you have on there. But it will give me better wind protection and less buffering. So I haven't been able to test it yet. This might be awesome, but who knows. So let's open the garage door and move it out in the snow and I'll try not to fall. And we're going to check how the lights are uh, with, the, with the high beam, the extra floodlight and so on. So. So you have to excuse me, but it's gonna be noisy. Uh, one thing I've noticed before I grab my camera is that I need to adjust things. You can see the regular low beam. They are quite low, but in a good position. I think this is okay. And uh, the high beam needs to be adjusted. It is a bit high up. But now I'm gonna turn on the high beam. And you can see that I light up everything pretty good. Uh, the high beam is just a bit high up on the bushes there in the, in the front uh, or on the berm over there. But I think the floodlight is a good selection here. And I cannot ride around and show you guys, but yeah, this is how uh, the lights are. High beam, no high beam. So that's pretty much it. Let's go fetch the bike, eh? Here we go. So there we go. That's the Rally Tower version 1 from Everything Tenray. I hope you enjoy this little uh, video and the uh, final uh, look at the tower and uh, next time you will see me with a tower build will be a complete version 2 rally tower i will not make it into a video series 
because uh, it's a lot of editing and production going around and it's gonna be a pain in the butt but you will see on my Instagram so follow me everything underscore tenery on Instagram you can see small video clips images and pictures and the stories from that build as well so stay tuned guys I hope you have a nice weekend take care and don't do anything stupid cheerios bye bye